Hello, my name is Richard Cleaver. I'm an audio engineer and I work out of uh, Kingston, Ontario, Canada. Uh, we're in my uh, project studio, Whisperwood Studios. This is the studio that I uh, do most of my mixing activities and editing activities. Uh, today I'm going to be walking through some work that I'm doing for a project called the World Music Project. The World Music Project is a collaboration of about 60 or so musicians uh, around the world and uh, they've asked me to work on one song, but I suspect this one song will have quite a bit of work associated with it. So we're going to start at the beginning in terms of actually just bringing the uh, files in, creating the uh, mix session itself, and hopefully as we get through that uh, today you'll have a sense as to how the work uh, gets started. And then over the next uh, few weeks as I uh, work on the mix I'll do a few more videos so you can see how the project evolves from the actual intake of the files to the actual mix activities itself. So on the screen we'll take a look at how the files did come in and we can see here that we have uh, uh, quite a few files. Uh, there appear to be 63 items in total and I can tell right away that they're not all in the same format uh, so this one is different from this one. Um, and I have a sneaking suspicion that these files are actually 32-bit uh, floating point files and I think they're dual mono files so that's going to be a bit of work for me as I bring them in. But Let's, uh, let's start Pro Tools up and, and we'll, we'll begin work. So with Pro Tools we'll start a new session and because I have uh, on good authority. <laughs> I think these are 32-bit float files. I wouldn't ordinarily uh, work in 32-bit. I would usually work in 24-bit. Uh, but they are 32-bit and I did have a chance to check and, and they are uh, recorded at 44.1 kilohertz. I'm not sure if they were recorded that way because again these, these musicians uh, used a variety of techniques to record their work. So I really don't know at this point in time how well the tracks have been recorded or what kind of shape they're in but we'll find out in, in a few moments. So I'm going to create a, a blank session and I'm going to call the session uh, interestingly enough um, I will call it World Music Project that I think would be good. We'll put it in its own folder And uh, there it is. So now we have an entirely blank landscape here. So the first thing obviously is to bring all of those files in. So what I'll do is I will import audio. We'll look for the files which I would put uh, on an archive disk and called World Music Project. I will uh, uh, select all the tracks that I'm wanting to bring in uh, and uh, and it looks like I am going to have to convert uh, some of them. So we'll bring all of those tracks in and see, uh, see what happens. Now this is going to take a few minutes, so we'll, we'll let it do, uh, do its work. So here we are, and we've just about finished bringing all the uh, files in. Took a little bit of time, um, but that's okay. So bring all these tracks in and we'll see what we uh, see what we have. So I can see uh, a few issues. Um, I have a couple of tracks here, Piano 1 and Piano 2. I don't think they're positioned properly. And uh, similarly with Bagpipe, um, there is a demo master which I guess we can uh, uh, listen to for a few moments to see what it says and and then there's a few other tracks here bass and drums so I'm not sure what's in there they, uh, they just don't look right to me I can also tell uh, just by looking at these tracks that uh, they're definitely dual mono it's possible that there are a few stereo tracks in here, but most of them are dual mono. And although they have some verbiage, um, there's going to be a lot of different sounds here. 
and I'm going to have to take a little bit of time to figure out what, uh, what I have. I'll select all of the tracks and I'm going to split them all to mono. And there they are. <laughs> so we now have uh, 184 tracks. That's a lot of tracks. So I'm going to have to I'm going to have to prune them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of the tracks that are the original tracks, the dual mono tracks. I'm going to hide and make them inactive. I'm going to have to check to see which ones are in fact in true stereo, but I suspect the, the majority of them are just dual mono tracks. And the problem with dual mono tracks, especially 32-bit floating, uh, A, it's very hard to do any kind of placement because you're dealing with a left and a right always. So if you're wanting to pan them, instead of just having a single pan control, you're actually having to manipulate two pan controls. And of course, it just adds to track density and a number of other things. So I'm going to hide and activate the ones that came in. And if I have reason to believe that uh, the ones that remain, that if one or two of them are in fact uh, stereo, then I will uh, I will deal with them. So let's take a bit of time and we'll we'll, we'll go through that. I'll I'll speed through the video, obviously, but this is uh, uh, this is where we're going to start. Okay, so now we've made all of the dual mono tracks. Um, inactive so we've 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 brought uh, all of these files up so they're now uh, mono but I have left and right so now it's going to take me a bit of time to actually go through and make a judgment call in terms of which ones are uh, true stereo tracks and which ones are just basically mono I'm gonna guess at a few of them but it's gonna take me some time to do that so let me work on that and uh, and I'll get back to it in a moment so what I'm going to do now that I have all of the uh, mono tracks uh, up, I'm going to mute the um, the demo uh, master, and I'm going to mute. There's a bagpipe track that doesn't look like in the it's in the right spot, so I'm going to mute that one. There are a few other tracks here that I'm not sure where they belong, so I'm going to mute those as well, and. Uh, and we'll revisit them at uh, at a later point in time. But I'll just uh, I'll just do that just to get a sense as to you know do I have sound coming up. So here's what I've got so far. So what we have now are, are some tracks. Now there's two things that I'm going to have to do before I actually uh, start mixing uh, at all. Uh, one is I'm going to have to go through and I'm going to strip out areas of the tracks that aren't uh, relevant to me. Uh, and, and I'm going to rename them and I'm going to color code them and group them so that I have some way of, of being able to handle all of these tracks. Uh, because I don't see s names like, you know, drbklft.l as being very helpful in terms of uh, figuring out what these songs are. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to sort of increase the... Uh, uh, the size of the waveforms that uh, sort of helps me a little bit in terms of doing what uh, what I'll do first. So what I'll do first is I'll actually go through and strip out all of the parts of the tracks that I don't need. So for example, uh, on this one, which uh, I think is an accordion, uh, it spends most of its time being quiet. Uh, so it has a section here. So that's the accordion. So if you're not too familiar with Pro Tools, there, there is a cool way of doing this sort of thing. You can get the strip threshold. Um, just before I do that, let me make sure I've got the track selected. <laughs> okay, that's good. So I can, uh, I can bring up the uh, strip threshold, and you can see right now it's actually, it's actually 
got the section there. Um, and I think it's actually all I really need. Yeah, so I might uh, I might pad it a little bit um, so the start of it is uh, a little further out, and we'll take a look at the end, and we'll give it a bit on the end as well. All right, so I, I strip it, uh, and that's good. So that's just giving me now the track itself. And uh, and then I'll put a fade on it. And 10 milliseconds on either end is, is, is good. That way it won't make any noise or clips. Now I might actually have to go into some of these tracks with a little more uh, granularity to make sure there isn't noise between tracks. I suspect on some of them there will be. But uh, I'll quickly go through, well quickly, it will take me a little bit of time, but I'll go through the tracks and uh, uh, but I'll show you another example of how this works. I mean, this one was an easy one to do because it was just that one section. But if we uh, take a listen to it, all we have is that one. But let's take, uh, well, I don't know, let's take, uh, let's take this flute track. This flute track appears a few times uh, in the song. And so what we can do with, uh, with that one uh, same thing. We can uh, uh, we can select it, uh, and uh, um, and when we select it, we can see you know how it's uh, parsed it out. So I always like to just go in and check because you know in the case of this one, for example, the the tail should probably be a bit further, and that's probably good there. And then looking at the rest of them. They look uh, pretty good to me. Right? So all that looks good. So what I can do now is I can uh, strip them. And they're all stripped. And, and I will put a fade in front and behind. And so now I've got uh, all of these flute tracks uh, isolated. I also think I took out a bit of noise. I can tell, I'll show you another example of that in a moment, but I can tell when there's a little bit of uh, clutter in, in, in the track. But if we listen to this one now, we'll see we've just got the flute. And there was, you know, there was some tail there, so we, it was good that we left it. Uh, actually, since they're all pan left, <laughs> I'll put it more in the center. How is that? They're much better. All right. And then here. So that's what I like to do with, with each one of the tracks uh, when, when I bring it in for a mix. Uh, I'll give you an example of, of, of why that, that's helpful. If we take a look at uh, this one, which I'm guessing is a vocal track, um, we listen here. There's a, I'll make it nice and obvious. But there's a. We don't need that in the song. So what I uh, again just using the uh, strip uh, silence, uh, I can I can actually uh, decide to you know tighten it. Um, but again, because there's enough um, sensitivity there, I mean I can I can I can do that. <laughs> You know, when I do that, it uh, should get rid of most of the clutter. Um, but this one has got quite a bit of clutter, and I have to check to see what's uh, what's there. So I'm going to um, be a little kinder with it than uh, uh, than I have been. Like I'm going to have to check that first before I strip it, right? So let's just see what we've got. It's studio dialogue. I don't think we need that, do you? So I actually think on that one, we can actually get rid of all of it, right? And that can uh, that can go. Okay, so um, So I think it's all good. And we'll 
activate it. And I'll give I'll give this one a listen. I gave my heart with no result, but I will make it, yes, I know. Cause I'm searching for my goal. That is my dream, and I will find that open door. I gave my heart. Good. So, what we've done uh, to this point, uh, we have. I've downloaded all of the tracks. Uh, I did a quick review of the tracks to see the file format that they're in, and I determined that most of them were actually dual mono format, 32 bit. And of course, very difficult for me to make use of uh, dual mono tracks, especially as I suspect uh, most of them are in fact mono tracks. So my first job was to create the Pro Tools session, bring in all of the audio files, uh, look at all the dual mono, split them to mono, hide and make inactive the original tracks, just in case I need to get back at them for, for whatever reason. And then split into mono actually makes a left and a right pair so I quite arbitrarily decided to hide and make inactive the right side, except for those tracks that I thought might be a stereo pair, and I'll be able to evaluate those and see if they are. I've also asked uh, the producer to give me a sense as to whether the, there were some true stereo files in the uh, tracks that he sent to me. Once I did that, I went through all of the tracks, as you can see here, and I stripped out all of the components that I, I did not need. Uh, so, so that really all I have are the actual. Um, so, so what I have are the actual uh, uh, parts that where the where the tracks are, are are sounding. The song itself is fairly long. It's it looks to be almost uh, ten minutes in length. So it does help me visually to uh, only be worried about tracks that that are active. Uh, and if there's any clutter in any of the tracks, I've probably eliminated most of them. I think there are uh, at least. Four five or so vocal tracks in here, and I'm going to have to get pretty granular with those. I had a quick listen uh, before, and many of the voices have clicks and pops and other extraneous noises, and, and we'll need to clean those up. So for now, this will just give you a sense as to what it took to actually bring the files in uh, and get them ready. My next step, which I'll share with you in, in, in the next video, will be to go through, name all of the tracks, color code all of the tracks, and uh, group them in such a way that it makes the mix a little easier. So I hope you've enjoyed this first little view of the, uh, of the project itself. I guess we will call this step one, bringing the files into the uh, session for mixing. Thanks for uh, watching.